Welcome back everyone to 3.5. This is my bonus video here. When I was doing this original video in 3.5, I really didn't like the way that this picture came out. It's really hard to explain this with a static picture. So I decided it'd be worth some time, although there are no more notes or anything to go along with this, it'd be worth some time to sit down with Desmos and actually visualize this a little bit better because I want to help your understanding of what is this instantaneous rate of change thing and why do we approximate it by finding the slope between these two points here. So let me go ahead and pull up Desmos. I can have a few things already graphed. Here I'm going to be working with the function x squared for right now, but really you can change this to any function you want. And then the first thing here is that our goal right? What the end game is, is that I want to know what the slope of this point is, right? So what is the slope of the function at this point? And the claim is, well, later in those notes, I actually gave you an explicit formula. Let me zoom down to it really quick. We, right? So this was the equation for the tangent line right here that tells you, you know, what is the slope at that point? So I want to graph this. I want to show you what the slope at that point is. So let me go back here. And actually, one of the things that I've plotted down is that y minus f of a is equal to f prime at a times x minus a. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one on. Oops. There we go. And you can see, so this is the slope at that point, right? Whatever the slope of this line is, that's the slope at this point. That's the tangent line. Right? So this is, again, the slope here would be the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change or the slope at the point. Right, There's a lot of names for this thing. But our goal, again, is try to figure out what is this f prime of a. So now let's go back. And the claim was, back here, that in order to get what that instantaneous rate of change is, or in order to get what the slope of that point is, right? Or that we called that also the derivative or the slope of the tangent line. Right, There's lots of names. The claim is we want to find the slope between these two points. So our point that we're interested in, a f of a, so that in our case is this red point, a f of a, and this other point, this point q, which is a lot like a f of a, but there's these little extra h's, right? Because again, the slope formula doesn't work with just one point. We need a secondary point. So I went ahead and I plotted this point q. So it's right here, a plus h comma f of a plus h. And so you can see this thing, this is the blue point. Okay? And depending on what the h value is, it gets farther and closer to this red point. So for instance, in fact, I can just hit this play button, it's very nifty. So it goes farther away, and then as h gets smaller, you can see it gets close to that red point. And let me try to pause it here when it gets close. Do, 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 do. It's like a carnival game. Okay, there we are. So you can see these points are pretty close to each other. H is negative 0.13. And if I zoom it just a little bit more, 0.1 here at zero, they're right on top of each other. And then it goes a little bit more, so on and so forth. So if I figure out the slope between these two points, the claim is so long as Q right here is close to P, this will do a good job of approximating this slope at a point. So slope between these two points, well, that is going to be given by the slope of the secant line. So I've actually already graphed that as well. Let me go ahead and click that. And so you can see this is the purple line that I've just added here. So let me zoom this out a little bit. And so you can see the slope between these two points. This is P, this is Q, given by the slope of the secant line, right? So, or AKA the average rate of change, right, would be the slope of the secant line. So again, the idea is that as h gets small, as it gets close to zero, that the slope of the purple line is going to line up and be the slope of the green line. Essentially, they're going to be right on top of each other. So let me show as they get very, very close, these lines get very close to each other, and the slopes line up, and they're basically right on top of each other. Now watch what happens when h is equal to zero. When h is equal to zero, notice the purple line disappears, right? Because when h is equal to 0, I'm dividing by 0, and that's a big problem. But luckily, for limits, right? Again, so we're thinking about limits, this thing that we're trying to apply to this. Limits don't care about when it's equal to 0. They only want to know what's happening around 0. And so around 0, the claim is this purple line and this green line are very, very close to each other. OK. So now let me go back and kind of explain one more time. Then, for instance, what we did here in example 5.4. So in example 5.4, we wanted to approximate the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change 
or this derivative, right, of our function at three. Now, in order to do that, we took very small values of h, right? So in this case, our a value is three. So this kind of, you think about this as our p or our red point. And then our q is off by 0 0.01, right? So again, these are very, very close to each other. And the claim is that this right here, the slope between these two points would approximate the instantaneous rate of change. So in fact, this is one of the nice things about Desmos. Let me go ahead and switch it up. So I'm gonna make one minus x squared, easy as that. I'm gonna take my a to be equal to three. There we go. Ah, oh, you can't see it, it's down here, I guess. Let's go down, in fact, let's zoom out. Maybe that'd be a good option. Okay, and then I'm gonna choose h to be equal to that 0 0.01. 0 0.01. And again, now if I zoom in, you can see that this purple line and this green line are essentially right on top of each other, right? That this purple line right here is doing a great job of approximating that green line. That green line is, again, the instantaneous rate of change or the slope at the point, right? So this purple line and this green line are basically right on top of each other. In part B, we did 0 0.001. And now they're very, very close. I mean, essentially they are right, right, right on top of each other. Again, you can't really let h be equal to zero. That won't work out. But when h is very, very close to zero, the purple line and the green line are right on top of each other. Okay, so I hope that has helped explain uh, how the average rate of change between two points that are very, very close to each other does a good job of approximating this new thing, this instantaneous rate of change. And again, I think that at very least we can all agree that, uh, that Desmos did a lot better than this picture right here. You could see really Q getting close to P and the green line. Well, I guess I used red right here for the secant line, but you can see that the purple line and the green line got very close to each other, H's, all that good stuff. So I'm very happy with Desmos. So I hope this has helped your understanding. I'll see you guys next time in 3.6. See you then.